Okay, good evening, dear ladies, righteous ladies. I would like to shh, I would shh, I would like to start. Today we're going to have a special lesson. You know, this week's parasha is parasha Tre'e in the Chumash, in Chumash Dvarim. But we are not going to touch this parasha. We're going to prepare ourselves for Chodesh Elul, for the month of Elul. You know that this Shabbat is Shabbat Mevarchim Chodesh Elul, which means this Shabbat you go you try to read the whole Tehillim, either together as a group or even at home if you can read the whole Tehillim on your own. It's a special Shabbat? Yes, Shabbat Mevarchim, Chodesh Elul. Rosh Chodesh, the beginning of the month is on Tuesday and on Wednesday. There are two, two days of Rosh Chodesh, which means Monday night is Erev Rosh Chodesh, the evening of Rosh Chodesh. Let's concentrate. So I would like to tell you, dear ladies, this Shabbat, please join together in groups, read the whole Tehillim, it's Shabbat Mevarchim. Okay, it's a, it's a blessing Shabbat for, for the month of Elul. So join together in groups on Shabbat and read the whole Tehillim. If you can read on your own the whole Tehillim without taking out any word from your mouth, it's a big blessing. Will at night? In the morning on Shabbat. I know, but let's say I want to do Friday night. Yes. Am I allowed at the Sudan Friday night to read the whole Tehillim? It's better on Shabbat itself. You can read if you want to, but it's better on Shabbat. It's Shabbat Mevarchim. I would like to tell you, dear women, shh, as I always tell you, shh, let's concentrate. Otherwise, I can't give you this lecture today. I have a special lecture. The lecture is going to be about the four exiles of the children of Israel and the fifth exile. So we'll have to concentrate in order that you will understand. We're going to flow through the Tanakh. We'll go, we'll go to the prophets. We'll go to the Chumashim. We'll go through the Tanakh. We'll go to the Midrashim. We'll go to Mishneh Torah of the Rambam. But I need you to concentrate today. So let's start with Bezrat Hashem on Tuesday and on Wednesday. Those are Rosh Chodesh, both days. You'll tell your husbands and your sons. When they daven and they say in Shacharit, Musaf shel Rosh Chodesh, they will say Musaf shel Rosh Chodesh, the prayer of Shmona Yisra. In the middle of the prayer of Shmona Yisra, you come to Baruch Ata Hashem, Mekadesh Yisrael, Barashei Chodashim. Baruch Ata Hashem, Mekadesh Yisrael, Barashei Chodashim. I would like to remind you, you have, when you say Baruch Atah Hashem, here, you have to concentrate on the right combination of the name of God for the month of Elul. It gives prosperity, it gives health, it gives parnasah, good income. Bezrat Hashem, so you have in your mind, lechaven, you have to... I know it's a birthday, so everybody's excited. So a few minutes. So you have to concentrate on... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have to concentrate on the two names of Hashem. The names, shh, the right combination for the month of Elul is... This is Kuf, Kuf, Vav, Yud. You know I'm writing Kuf because I'm wiping the board, but you know that you have to concentrate on hey. Okay, and the other name is Kuf Kuf Yud Aleph. You just need to see them in front of your eyes. You do not say the names, but you only see that in front of your eyes. This is the right combination for the month of Elul. How come that is cool? Because one name is the name of Havia, and the other name is Ehiye, the name that God gave Moshe Rabbeinu when he asked him, what shall I tell the children of Israel? How do I call you? What's your name? You remember? So that's the name. So both of them concentrate. This is the right combination. Shh. Okay. And now everybody understood that? Please tell that to your husbands, to your sons, when they daven in the yeshiva, to your girls. Yes. Which name I need to... Both of them. Those two names. Yes. Okay. Those two names. Both of them. It comes from the pasuk. Utsdakati elanu ki. The end of each, of each word, you'll see this is the name of God for the month of Elul. The end of each word in the sentence. The, 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 
אוקיי, יונתן מתוק. וצדקה תהיה לנו כי. It comes from this פסוק. That is the right combination. Now I would like to start, dear women. We are going to start with a book of the prophet Daniel. Now I would like to start. You know that this is after the ruining of the first temple. Leah, calm down. I would like, please, to tell you, we are starting with the book of Daniel, and we are starting with the four exiles. And you will see that Nebuchadnezzar, he is the king of Babel, Babylon, and now that he is ruling and he conquered Israel, all Israel he conquered, all of the wise, the sages of, the, of Israel are under his control now. And it says over there, in chapter, in chapter 2, that Nebuchadnezzar dream, had a dream, and it says like this, V'shnat shtayim l'malchut Nebuchadnezzar chalam, Nebuchadnezzar chalom, v'titpaem rucho, it's written. It's written over there that he was so excited and disturbed. I have to put it in English. Okay. He was so excited and disturbed that it's written, v'titpaem rucho, v'titpaem rucho. Look, it's very weird. His spirit became very excited. He was very frightened. But over here, instead of writing Vatifam Rucho in Hebrew, there's double taf. You see, Vatitpaem. You know who had Vatifam Rucho? It was Paro. You remember Paro also dreamt a dream. You remember about the cows? The healthy ones and the seven, and the seven that were not, the sick ones that were not healthy. So over here we see when, it's, when we speak about Paro, we see only Tafachat. But over here we see, have two Taps. The last letter in the Hebrew, Aleph Beth. I would like to tell you, dear women, over here in Paro, when we speak about Paro, Paro remembered his dream, but he did not know how to explain it. He did not know how to interpret the dream. But over here, Nebuchadnezzar did not remember his dream, but he knew But this is something bad. So he was very excited, he was very frightened, he was afraid that something will happen to his kingdom. He was ruling the, almost the whole world, so he was very afraid. And that's why we have two tops over here. One is to tell us that he did not remember his dream, and the other one is to say that he didn't know the interpretation because he didn't even remember his dream. So he called all of the Chachamim. It says the Chartumim, the Kashadim. He called all of them. All, all the sources, the astrologists, everyone. He called all of them. All the Chartumim. You remember Chartumim from Paro? And he called all of them and he said, I had a dream. I do not remember my dream. And I want you to tell me what was my dream and to interpret the dream. <laughs> Now, the, the, the Chachamim, all of the sources and the astrologers, they were very afraid of the king. So the, they saw him that he was very excited. So they said to the, themselves, maybe he thought that he, he will die or something bad will happen to him. So first of all, they told him, don't worry, you king, you Nebuchadnezzar, the king of ba Babylon, you're going to be alive forever. Uh -oh. That's the first thing they told him. Then he said, listen very carefully. Again, I'm telling you, you're trying to buy time, he says. You have to tell me what was my dream and give me the interpretation of the dream. He said, if you will not do that, I'm going to cut all of you and your families to pieces. I'm going to ruin your houses. But if you do give me the dream and the interpretation, I'm going to make you very rich. Everything you will desire, I'm going to give you. So again they came to him, they cannot know what he dreamt. So they came again and they told him, please tell us your dream. He says, I see that you are buying time again. They said, but you know, only the angels can know your dream. We are human beings, we do not know what happens over there, up there. So we do not know your dream. So he started, he gave a decree and he started to kill his wise people. He started to, and he killed them to pieces, he cut them to pieces. And he said, all of the wise people and all of the sages of Israel are going to be cut to pieces, including the prophet Daniel, Mishael, Hananiah, Bazariah. All of them are going to be cut to pieces. All, he, he did not care. He did not distinguish. He said, all of the wise people that I have in Babylon are going to be dead. Meanwhile, Daniel and Navi heard that. 
And he said, what shall I do? So he called the three other prophets, Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah. He called them and he said, let's dive into Hashem and ask him if he can help us and just give us a vision to tell us. Maybe he will give one of us a vision. So Daniel started davening to Hashem, and Hashem gave him a vision. And in his vision, he saw the dream that the king of Babylon... Thank you. Amen. So he saw the vision and the interpretation of the vision. He thanked Hashem. He, he, he spoke about the glory of Hashem. And he went to the executor and he told him, Tell the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, that I can help him. That he shall stop killing the wise people in, in his kingdom. So they brought him in front of the king of, the, of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. And it, say, it goes like this. He stands in front of him and he says, You, O king, were watching and behold, a huge statue. In your dream you saw a huge statue. It was 60 amah, the height, and 6 amah, the width. It says a huge statue you saw there. And he says, this statue, it, it, it was Im immense, he says, and whose brightness was extraordinary, stood opposite you, and it, its appearance was fearsome. This statue, its head was of gold. I'm going to do the statue with you. Now we're going to draw the statue on the board. The head, Harosh, was of gold. That's what he tells him. You, dream of, you dreamt about a statue, and the statue had a, an image of a human being. And the head statue was gold. And then he continues and he says, he, goes, he says like this, Its breast and arms were of silver. So you see over here arms, and I'm, I'm drawing as I can. <laughs> and his breast. Over here, all of this was of kesef, silver, okay? His breasts and his arms of the statue. It's very important. You will see a prophecy until the end of days. This prophecy is exactly what we see today. So it's until the end of days. That's what he saw, and I'm going to give you the explanation, and we're going to flow through the Tanakh with it. And then he continues, and he says, Its belly and ties are of copper, nechoshet. Its belly over here and its ties over here are of copper, nechoshet. Both of them. And he continues, listen, it's very weird, a very, a very weird, its legs of iron. So the legs, you know, the, the leg has three parts. So the legs over here are of iron, barzel. And he says that the feet are a combination of iron and clay. The feet, all ten, you know, the fingers in the feet are all of them a combination of iron and clay. Very weird dream. And then he says, you saw in your dream that there was a stone. You know what clay is? Can you explain to me in Russian clay? No, clay is not glina. Clay is glina. It's a Okay, she will understand the idea. So I would like to tell you, dear women, he saw in his dream, he tells him, you saw in your dream that there was a stone that was thrown on the image. It was a very huge image. So the stone was thrown on the image, and the stone hit over here, the last part of the legs. And by hitting the last part of the legs, she just chopped them. And little by little, all the image was chopped to little pieces, and the wind took it away, and there was nothing over there anymore. And then that stone became a mountain. And the mountain stood there forever. Forever long. Like God is forever. Infinity, also the mountain, stood there forever. So how, tell me please, how do you think Nebuchadnezzar felt? Because he can tell him a story, but did he know that he's telling the truth? It says in the Midrash that once Daniel, the prophet, started telling him about the, the vision that he saw, he really saw that in front of his eyes, he knew this was my dream. Otherwise he would have killed Daniel, the prophet. And then he tells him, nobody can tell you the interpretation of this dream, and nobody could have told you this dream that you dreamt. 
only the king of kings, which means HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem could have gave this prophecy. So he says, only the king of kings could have gave you this vision because you were thinking, you wanted to know what will happen to your kingdom. So he gave you a picture that will show you until the end of days, until our days. The end of days, the, the days of Mashiach. I would like to just say right now that Bezat Hashem Shagia Mashiach Sitkani Bimra Biamenu Amen. Shagia Mebasar Eliyahu Nabi Eliyahu Tish Biliyahu Gladi Bimra Bano Mashiach Ben David Eliyahu Nabi Zachur Letov. So it says, he says, so the king wants to know the interpretation of it. So he says, listen very carefully. God made you. God made you a high king, he says. You are the head of this statue, the head of the image. This, this is Babylon. You are Nebuchadnezzar, the head of the image, he says. But when your kingdom will be finished, there is going to be another kingdom. Shall Parasu Madai, Persia and Madai, both of them, they are going to be, they are going to conquer the world after you. And that's why it's the two arms. And over here, the breast, over here. And then he says, after them, there's going to be another kingdom. The kingdom of Greek, Yavan. Yavan is over here. The kingdom of Greek, there's going to be after Parasumadai. And after the kingdom of Greek, and you know, all of these three are connected with the, with the ruining of the first temple. And then after that, there is going to be a kingdom that is called Rome, which is going to conquer the whole world. Rome over here, Roma. Which is going to conquer the whole world, it says. So he tells him, he tells him, and over here, you can see that there's a mix-up between the, the iron and the clay, because the fingers are separated to five kingdoms from clay and five kingdoms of iron, but they are mixed up. So he says, this is the end of days. This is the happening of the end of days. Why? Let's look. If I told you that the iron over here is Rome, you know Rome, all the Romans believed in, in Yeshu. So it says that they became Christians. So the iron is an atzrut, barzel, is Christianity. And Cheres, the clay, the Islam. It's the Arabs, it's the Islam. So it says at the end of days, there will be ru ruling the world, the Muslims and, and the Christians, which means the kingdoms are going to be divided between five kingdoms that will have power from the Christian side and five from the Muslim side. And you can see that, like Saudi Arabia, and you can count them. You can see the five in each of them today, and they're going to mix in between them. And how did they mix in between them? They mix by intermarriage. And you will see it's true. Even Arafat, if you look at it, Arafat was married to a, a Christian. And if you look at Hussein, he was also married to a Christian. And the, the king of Tunis was married to a Christian. So if you look very carefully, they mixed up in between them. You will see it's true, it's these days. He says all of them are mixed up and they're together. But the, the Christians, are, they are the iron, so they are, they are stronger than those of the clay. And this is, this is what she saw. But, he says, the small stone that you saw that was thrown on this image is the children of Israel. This is the hand of God. God at the end of days, in Messiah's days, God is going to take this stone he is going to ruin all of these. All of this statue is going to be ruined. We're going to speak about it when we go to the book of Zechariah. So all of this statue is going to be ruined by this small stone. Nothing will be there anymore. And the ones that are going to be there, the ones that will stay at the end, I'm going to tell you in the book of Zechariah what will happen to them in a few minutes. So it says that then, you remember I told you that the stone was thrown without a hand, which means that God is going to create miracles to the children of Israel. There will be big miracles. And while the stone was thrown on the statue, it became then a big mountain and stayed over there forever. So this is what is going to happen to the children of Israel. Because at the end of time, at the end of days, 
we are under the control of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it says. And I would like to tell you, all the other nations have angels, 70 angels. Shibim Umot, 70 nations, 70 angels. And they are controlling those, those nations. And at the end of days, those angels won't be, so the nations won't be. But the ones that will stay, they are going to worship Hashem. But the children of Israel are going to stay there forever because the Kadosh Baruch Hu is infinity. So also the children of Israel are infinity. We'll be here forever. So it says we are going to now to travel. So we can see over here the iron and the clay. And this is really, truly our days. But let's go back. Let's look, go back and just watch what happens from the beginning. Did Hashem tell us this prophecy from the beginning? Did Hashem tell us that there's going to be Acherit Hayamim? So we are going to open the book of Bereshit. The beginning, the, the end of days. And we're going to, the, to go to the book of Bereshit. Uh, what and happened with, the, with that dream when I'm Nessa, Oh, I'll it. finish the dream. Okay, before we go to Bereshit. So it says that Nebuchadnezzar, which heard this, he was astonished. He knew this was the truth. You know, you can feel when you are hearing the truth. And then, because he knew that, he wanted to bow down to Daniel, the prophet. He says, you're wise. You have a special connection with Hashem. He says, it's not from me. This is Hashem gave me. But I'm a regular human being. So he made him a minister above all his ministers. And it says that also that Nebuchadnezzar built a big image by Bikat Dura. In the valley of Dua, he built a big image, exactly the same, a big statue like this, the same, exactly with the same uh, midot, with the same, uh, with the same height, with the same width, everything the same like Daniel told him. And he did it all, all of the statue. He did not separate the statue, divide it to gold, to, uh, to gold, to silver, to uh, copper. He did not, uh, iron, clay, he did not divide it. He did all of the statue out of gold. Uh -huh. He said, if I'm doing all of my statue out of gold, now I'm going to have my kingdom forever. Because he believed that he will call all of the kings of the nations to him, and they will have to bow to this statue, Bibikat Dua, in the valley of Dua. And then the, it's like they're accepting his kingdom, his malchut on them. And you know it wasn't true, it didn't help him. But it says, <laughs> but you can see over here, I would like to tell you that when the prophet Daniel gives the interpretation of the dream, he says like this, he, he gives the interpretation, he adds to the, to the iron, the copper, he puts them as one, and then he takes the clay and, eyes, and adds to it um, the gold and the silver, and he puts it together as one. He, did, he does not put it in, in, the same, in the order that he's telling the dream. And I would like to tell you why, dear women, it's very important. Because he already knew that at the end of days, yeah. Those nations will not worship idols, but they will become either Christians or Muslims. So look, it's true. When he said that the iron will join the copper, iron, the iron is Christianity, is Rome. And you know that Greek also became Christians. So the Greeks are the copper. So Greeks, it's Alexander Mokdon. So Greeks, we know, that joined the iron. They're all Christians. And then when he said about the cheres, the clay, he said that they are the Muslims. You can see that even Iraq, Babel, Babylon is Iraq of today. So the Iraq, all of them are Muslims. And when we go to Parasumadai, Iran, we can see that they are all Muslims too. So that's why he joined. They will be divided to Muslims, Christians, and Jews. So that's what we see over here. That's really, truly the end of days. So we go back. We are going to travel. To Bereshit. And it says, Kach. Okay, I will just swipe over here. Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashemayim ve Taretz. God created heaven and earth. Ve'aretz haita, it says, Ve'aretz haita, Tohu, Vabohu, Ve'choshech al Pnei Tehom, Ve'ruach. Elohim Merachefet Al Pnei Hamayim Look how beautiful it is. At the second sentence in, in Chumash Bereshit, we can already see that we have the end of days. 
It says, Ha'ariza, Zchutot again, and it says like this. It says, Ve'aret Saita Tohu, it means the exile of Babylon. Ze'bavel, Tohu ze'bavel. And we go, Ve'bohu, it's Madai, Madai Paras, the Iranians. And Ve'choshech is Yavan. Alpnei Tehom is Galut Edom. It's the exile that we have today, that we're in all, more than 2,000 years in exile. So this is the fourth exile. You can see it over here. We have Tau is Babylon, the bow is Madai Faras, and darkness is Yavan, and then Alpnei Tehom. It's, it's Galut Edom, the exile of Edom. And then we can see the Ruach Elokim, Merechat Alpnei Amai, means that Mashiach is going to come. The Ruach Elokim, Harizal says it means that this is Mashiach that is going to come. The Achrit Ayamim. So we already see at the beginning, we already see that there's already a prophecy for Achrit Ayamim, for the end of days. We can already see the prophecy. And then when we go to Avraham Avinu, Avraham Avinu, Bebrit Ben Abeitarim, he always also hears the prophecy that his sons are going to be in exile. And they're going to have a hard time, but eventually Mashiach is going to come and help them. And then we go to Yaakov Avinu. And we know, you remember, Yaakov Avinu was, uh, was running away from his brother. And it says that he was running away from his brother. And when he ran away, he went and slept on a stone. You remember? Yeah. Yes. So he took a stone and he slept like a pillow on the stone. And it says that he had a dream. And what was the dream? We spoke about the dream. You remember the ladder that was touching earth and then it went to heaven. It was a very tall ladder. And then it says that the angels went up and down. And I already told you it's very weird because angels do not live over here. They live up there. So they should go down and then go up. We gave several explanations about it. But now we're going to be, give the explanation about the in the end of days. For this Sulam Yaakov. I would like to tell you, it says... Yes. How can you like this, like completely like sentence? I don't understand. Excuse me? Just can you say in English? Oh, can. I'll give you the exact... Even though it's not... I don't think it's interpreted very well over there. It's written like this. It's, it means that it was the land was unformed. Unformed and like in chaos. Unformed and chaos, in darkness, and then choshech al pnei tom. It means tom means emptiness. Okay, everything was empty. Dark. That's the darkness is here. Choshech and tom is like emptiness. It's like a thing that you can fall inside, like a pit, a very big pit. There was emptiness. So those are the four exiles. But, how, but I told. How do they? Uh, I mean, say that these are. Uh, yeah. Harizal said that. Harizal Zchutat again and has said, this is a part of the secrets of the Torah. From here you know, let me explain something. You remember that I told you the end of the dream was that stone. Yeah. And it starts, Bereshit bara Elokim. Nachon? It starts, that's how it starts, the Torah starts. In the beginning God created, okay, heaven and earth. But what is the beginning? So it says, Reshit, the beginning is the children of Israel, the beginning is the Torah. God looked at the Torah and he created the world. And he just created the world by looking at the Torah. God created this world for the children of Israel in order that they will study his Torah. Period. That's why he created this world. God wanted us, the children of Israel, to spread his word in this world. He wanted us to tell everyone about his existence. How do we do that? By working on ourselves and doing tshuva and doing the right thing and being moral and doing his mitzvot. Mitzvot and good deeds. The ma'asim tovim. That's what God wanted. He created this world for, for us. We are like angels for him. We are the sons of the king. God is the king and we are his sons. And that's why he created the world. All of the nations are also his children. But we are called Bni Bachori, Bachori Israel. We are the firstborn in the family. God considered us as the firstborn. Like everyone has a firstborn in his family. So we have a responsibility. It's not only the Torah's responsibility, but also moral responsibility. And we have to love each other instead of Sinat Chinam because... Because this is how we can study and teach Torah. Without love, unconditional love that will be spread all over, we cannot fulfill the Torah. 
because I would like to tell you, dear women, like if there's a person and he has children and he has a friend that does not like his children, does he like that man? Of course he doesn't. So it's the same thing. If we do not like the children of God, we have problem with God himself. So first of all, we'll start, Bezat Hashem, everything starts with unconditional love. So it says in Sulam Yaakov, it says, Vehera Kadosh Baruch Hu Leyakov Avinu Et Surat Bet HaMikdash Banui Biyat Shlomo. He says that God showed him, I'm giving you from the Zohar Kadosh, in the ladder, already how the temple is going to be built by King Solomon. And then it says that he showed him that the temple is going to be ruined once and then twice the second time. And then the temple is going to be built forever. The third temple. Amen. And then he saw all of the kings of the nations. And it says, He saw the, the king of Babel, Nebuchadnezzar, going up the ladder, 70 stages up the ladder, and then going down. That's what he saw. Those are the Melachim, the kings. Look how beautiful. Going up, so he knew already that there will be exile of Babylon. And then he saw the Sarosh al Madai of Persia, he says, going up 52 stages of the ladder and then going down. And then it says the Sarosh al Yavan, and the Greek, he went up the ladder, it says, 180 years and then he went down. And then he saw that the king of Edom, was going up the ladder, but he did not see him go down the ladder. And it says that Yaakov was very afraid. It's written, Azit Yara Meod Yaakov, who he was very afraid. He said, Ramod Adavar. He said, it means that this kingdom will be forever. Truly, we're in exile for 2,000 years already. So it says, this kingdom is going to be forever. So God tells him, Amar lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Al titiare Yaakov, don't be afraid. Afraid Yaakov. Afal pisha sar azayigya ad kisa kavod kimat, which means he he almost came up to the throne of heaven of God, almost to the throne. He is going to go down, but you're going to go up to the throne of heaven, and you'll never go down. Like the mountain, the stone that became a mountain and was there forever. It's the same thing. He says, your children, you are going to be there forever. He is going to go up. And it will take time, but eventually he won't be there, and you're going to stay there for he- forever. That's what he tells him. And he, and he tells Yaakov Avinu that he can climb. He says you can climb, but Yaakov Avinu was very afraid. He was afraid to climb. He was afraid that he will go down. And it says that then the exiles, after that, the exiles started. You remember that he went after that. He had children. They went down to Egypt, and the exiles started. So now we see that even in Sulam Yaakov, we see the exiles. So you know that Yaakov had a twin brother. Who was his twin brother? Esav. Who was Esav? Which means Esav is a dom. This is this exile. And you remember that before them, who gave birth? Who was the father of Yaakov Avinu? Yitzchak. And, and Yitzchak, did he have a brother? He had a brother. Who was his brother? Ishmael. And the Muslims, the Arabs, come from Ishmael. And we're going back to the beginning. So the cheres that we see over here, the clay is Ishmael. And over here, the iron is a sav. Everything goes back to a sav Ishmael. We'll touch it. Meanwhile, we're speaking only about the four exiles. So let's continue. And it says like this. You know that when we speak about Yaakov Avinu, it says in, in the book of Michal, the prophet Michal, it says, Titen emet le Yaakov, which means Yaakov was true, he was a true person. So it says, Titen emet le Yaakov. Why did he give him truth? Because emet is the name of God. How do we know that? Because we know that Bereshit bara Elohim, the last letters of each word is the name of God, Emet. You see over here? Emet. So he gave truth to Yaakov because we have like a contract with Hashem. And we, every day, twice a day, we renew this contract. How do we renew the contract? By Shema Yisrael. When we say Shema Yisrael, we are renewing this contract. We just finished Parashat Ekev, and it says over there, we have the, the second part of Shema Yisrael and the third part. And it says over here, 
which means you have to listen. You have to listen to my mitzvot, to my orders, to my commandments, which I command you today, it says. Not yesterday, not in the past, but today. You have to listen to my commandments, which means every day when we say that twice a day, we are renewing this contract with Hashem. We have to do the contract. You know what happens when you go to a lawyer and you did not fulfill your side of the contract. They will sue you, you'll have to pay money, maybe you'll have to go to prison, <laughs> God forbid. So you have to fulfill the contract and we do that every day. So it says, And I would like to tell you, dear women, what, what does it say about a sav? Which means he used to hunt people with his mouth. How did he hunt his father with his, with his mouth? You remember, he used to ask him, he wanted to show, to show him how righteous he was, so he used to ask him, I would like to give tenth of my straw and my salt. I would like to give the tenth out of it. And you know you did not give a tenth from straw and, and the salt. But he wanted to show him how righteous he is and how he, he really truly does the commandments in the Torah. So he used to hunt him with his mouth. He used to, to be very sneaky, Esav. A sweet talk he used to speak to his father. So it says so it says that here we have the characteristics of Yaakov and the Sav. I would like to go with you before I finish this, we'll go back to Parashat Shmini. You remember Parashat Shmini is in the book of Vaikra, Humash Vaikra. You remember we studied about what happened to the sons of Aaron and Davaviu at the be at beginning of that of that Huma of that uh, parasha portion of the week, we can see that the sons of our own Adav Aviyu passed away on the eighth day so, of the Mishkan. So I would like to tell you, after that, we, see, we, we are speaking about kosher animals. Do you remember we spoke about kosher animals? I would like to show you how it's connected to the end of days, the kosher animals. So we are going back, and we'll continue with this, but first we have to go back to Humash, Humash Vaika. So it says over there that you are not allowed to eat animals, that they don't have a split hoof, which means their leg is not split, okay? And they do not chew the food again, which means they take up, they put up their food and chew it again. Two, two characteristics. And then there's a very, something very weird. God tells Moshe Rabbeinu to write only four animals, four animals, a camel, a rabbit, um, a hare, and then a pig. Only four animals. And those four animals, they have only one, a camel, a, a, a zegamal, a, a shapan, a nevet, a chazir. Only four animals. And he says only those four animals have only one kosher characteristics and one impurity. Only those four animals, listen very carefully, all over the world, even until the end of the days, does, it does not matter. You can search for all the animals in the world, and if you find one kosher characteristics in an animal, you'll find another, the second one, because it goes together. But if you did not find one, you won't find any, any kosher characteristics to the, for that animal. But there's exception for four animals. And the animals are, it's very weird, it's in the middle, you see the kosher animals, and then he says only from four animals. The camel, okay. the rabbit, the hare, and the pig. What's the hare? Yes. Like a rabbit, but it's... Exactly, they resemble each other. So it's out of the same family. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about it. <clears throat> Three of them, it's the camel, gamal, shafan, arnevet, vechazir. All three of them, the camel, it says all three of them. Just a minute, I'll find it. Okay, all three of them, the camel, the rabbit, and the hare, all three of them have the same characteristic, the same kosher characteristic, which means they chew, the, they chew again their food. All of them, all of them, 
Malay Gera, all three of them. But there is one Malay Gera, and they do not have a split in the hope over here. They do not have a split, which means you can see that they're not kosher. You do not have to even examine them. But he says only those three, out of all of the animals in the world, have only one characteristic. Only Hashem can tell us such a thing. No human beings, because we don't know even if we know all the animals in the world. So it says that only the three of them, they do not, they chew their food again. This is the kosher characteristic, but they do not have a split hole. And then the pig, it says, he has a split hoof. The kosher sign he has on his legs. But he does not chew. He does not chew again his food. So that he has, who he is, mafris parsa. Mafris parsa belo ma'alei gera. And they are ma'alei gera belo mafrisei parsa. And I would like to tell you a very beautiful thing. So it says in Masechet Yoma, it says in Masechet Yoma, uh, page 9, it says like this, Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Elazar, both rabbis, Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Elazar, said, Rishonim, first ones, Shenit Gala Avonam, that their sins were exposed, it says, Nit Gala Kitsam. It means that their end is known. We knew their end. But then it says, Achronim, the last ones, Shalonit Galavonam, which means that they are, the sins were not exposed. It says, Lonit Galakitsam. It says that their end was not exposed. But then they continue and say, Rabbi Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Tovat Sipornan, Shel Rishonim. The fingernail in the foot leg of the first ones is better than the belly of the last ones. So this is very weird. It seems very weird. You cannot understand it. But look how it's beautiful, how it goes back to all the exiles. I would like to tell you, it's written, I have over here, Midrash Rabbah, Parashat Shmini. I will give it already to you instead of reading part of it. I will tell you over there, it says that the Gamal represents Galut Babel, Babylon, the exile of Babylon. That's why we have only four animals. And the Shafan represents the exile of Madai, of Persia. And the Arnevet, the hare, represents the exile of Yavan, Greek. And the pig is, is, represents the exile of Edom. This exile, the second temple, the ruining of the second, this is the exile. So it represents this exile. So look again at the kosher, looking at the kosher characteristics. It says, why did the first temple, why was it ruined? Because of shfichud damim, avodah zara, shfichud damim v'giloi arayot. Three things, three sins, but everybody knew those sins. Everybody saw the sins, it wasn't hidden. It was, it was worshipping another god, and then giloi arayot, which is again incest, innocence, incest, incest. It's incest, and then the killing of people. So there are three sins, very harsh and, and hard sins. But then we know that they came back to Israel and they built the second temple. So because their sins was, in, was exposed and was, the, the sins were known, it says that the first one, the children of Israel, which sinned before the ruining of the first temple, all of the sins were known. That's why the end of their exile was also known. And they came back to the land of Israel. But it says, the second temple, they were all righteous. They were all Talmidei Torah. They studied Torah. They did, they did the tzedakah. They gave tzedakah. They were righteous. The only thing they had is in their heart. They had, they had false hatred. They hated each other. They disliked what they had in their mouth. They did not have in, did not, was not even with their heart. So because of that, the second temple was ruined. They behaved like they were righteous from the outside, but in the inside they were wicked. So because of that, the temple was ruined. So look, that this hatred was parallel to three big sins. Three sins that were, that were sinned in the first temple. So this hatred was, it's a big problem. 
When a person is not true with his mouth and his heart, it's a problem. Because then he's not true also to Hashem. He's not afraid of Hashem. Because I would like to tell you, dear women, we should be afraid of Hashem. Because He knows our thoughts. He knows our deeds. He walks with us. When we wake up in the morning, He wakes up with us. He comes, He, he brings our, uh, back our soul into the body. God is already with us. He's all the time with us. So now we go out of bed and He says, well, let's see if my children are going to do righteous things for me. If they will really respect me, for the, they will remember that I'm walking with them. And then what do we do? Sometimes we take this God's energy and God forbid we do bad things. We slander people. We do not pray, daven before we eat something. We do not daven when we wash our hands, when we go out of the toilet. We do not do what Hashem wanted us to do. So Hashem is disappointed at that moment. But He's El Achum Bechanun. But He has patience. He waits for us. He waits for us till we do tshuva. He says, I, this, I know my children is, is pure and good from the, the core and the essence. So I know eventually they can do tshuva. So he waits for us. So we can see over here, this is the same thing. The camel, the rabbit and the hare, all of them, they have the kosher sign from inside. But from the outside, they are not kosher. So it says, just like Rabbi Yochanan said, Tobatsi Pornan Shelachorim, the legs, the foot is better than those that were the last, which means the, the exiles, the, the people that were exiled after the second temple was ruined. Why? Because their sin was, was, was shown to everybody. They could see the, the sin was known. You understand? Because it's exactly like those three animals. Because we know that they are not kosher by their foot. So we don't have even to check. We don't have to check if they are chewing again their food. But then the pig is not like that. The pig, his kosher sign is over here on his foot, on his hove. His hoves have a split. So he shows to everyone. Midrash Rabba Vaikra says like this. Beparashat Shmini, it says, he shows to everyone, look, I'm kosher. Look, I'm good. Look at me. I'm good. I'm kosher. So it means it's the same thing with the second temple. From the outside they were righteous, but from the inside they weren't. It's the same thing. The characteristic that made him kosher is from the outside. It's his food. But the characteristic that shows that he's not kosher is from the inside. That's why Rabbi Hanan said, Yoter shel rishonim shel which means that the, the, the foot, the hole of the first ones is better than the belly, the stomach of the last ones because everything bad that they thought was inside, they did not show it in, on the outside. And God wants us to be even. Our mouth and our heart should be even. So we see over here in, in, the, in Parashat Shmini, in the portion of the, of, of the week Shmini, in Chumash Vayikra, we see also in the kosher animals and non-kosher animals, we can see the parallel to this image of Babylon. But we did not finish. How do we know that Yaakov Avinu, when he was born, also wanted to warn us about it? You remember that when he was born, he was holding the, the akev, the heel of Esav. So it says, what is the heel of Esav? The heel of Esav is the hope of the pig. The pig shows that he's kosher. So he was holding the heel of Esav to show us, listen, my children, when we read the portion of the week, we should know, be careful of the, he of the hope of this pig, of Edom, because he seems like from the outside he's kosher, but he's not kosher. He tries to make you like him. He tries to make you go out from the way of Hashem. He tries to convince you that it's okay to marry non-Jewish women. It's okay to marry non non-Jewish men. He tries to make you imitate and copy his ways. So Yaakov Avinu that knew that he was holding with his hand, like, like putting a finger on, on his akev, on his hove of this Edom, of Esav, and telling us, children, my children, beware for generations until the end of days, exactly to these days. Those are the days. So he tries to show us, be careful of him. Because he is very dangerous. Because you will think that his kingdom is like a wise kingdom. He has courts. He has uh, theaters. He has um, concerting concerts. He has everything. It's like civilized. But remember, dear children, that these civilized people took our children and our Jewish nation 
but showing to the Holocaust, to ovens. Remember, those are very civilized people. So don't fool yourself, he says Yaakov. I'm holding his feet. He seems like he's kosher. His homes are split this big. But do not forget that this is not the right thing. You should remember that I'm your God, that you are the children of Yaakov of Israel, and you have a higher calling, and you should not mix in between with the, children, with, with the other nations. It says, I would like to tell you, just a minute. It says that we have to be separated. We need to be separated. And we, it's, the children of Israel are, are, um, resemble fire, like Hashem. Hashem resembles fire. So the children of Israel also resemble fire. And the nation resemble water. So if you took, take a pot and you put it on the fire and the pot is closed, you will see that the fire will cause the water in the pot to boil and then to evaporate till nothing is in there. But then if you make a hole in that pot or you've opened the cover and you let the, all the water flow from the sides, it will, it will extinguish the fire. So I would like to tell you, dear women, when we start, and we, when we start to combine, to get mixed with the going, with intermarriage and things like that, and we start to tell ourselves, this is permitted and this is permitted. Maybe we can do it different days. Today we are in, in the 21st century, so it's a different day. We are modern. When we start doing that, we lose our way from Hashem. This is what Yaakov Avinu wanted to show us when he held his heel. So I would like to tell you, dear women, so you will tell me we're speaking about four exiles. So what is the fifth exile? Dear women, this is, we are now in the times that can happen, God forbid, a fifth exile. And Bezrat Hashem, that Mashiach will come before it happens. Because the fifth exile, all the four exiles were compared to animals. But the fifth one is compared to a wild man, a wild human being. Pere Adam. You know who is Pere Adam? You remember that Hagar was running away from Sarai Menu. She was running away from before she gave birth because she was very harsh with her. So she ran away to the desert and an angel told her, don't worry, go back, you're going to have a son. You shall call him Ishmael. Those are the Muslims. And you will know that he will be Pere Adam, a wild man he is going to be. Pere Adam, he called him. This is not an animal anymore. But this is already called a human being, Pere Adam. But he's not a full human being because the children of Israel are called Adam, a whole human being. Adam, and he is called wild man. So it says, and it says, Be'adob akol, be'ad kol bo, and his hand will be in everyone, and everyone will have their hands on him. And we can see it in our days today. Look at, all, at what, what happens with the Arab nations. We can see it happening in our days. So we can see... <coughs> Just a minute. So I will go back with you to Parashat Lech Lecha in Bereshit. It says by the Zohar Kadosh. it says by the Zohar Kadosh like this, the Parashat Lech Lecha. It says, Yishmael, Liyoto ben Avraham, because he's the son of Avraham Avinu, Mashul, he's compared, Le Pere Adam, Nikra Pere Adam, wild man, because I already told you it's in Bereshit, he's called, he a Pere Adam, Yadov Akol, Biyad Kol Bo. Velo Adam Gamur, he's not a whole man, he's compared to a wild man. And it says, Mipnei Shemal Velo Para, which means he did, he circumcised himself, but he did not open the membrane. He lost a priya. So he is called Pere Adam, a wild man. And it says, uh, the fourth Galuyot, it says in the Zohar Kadosh, are compared to animals. And that's why David, King David says, just a minute, look what King, King David already knew that it can happen. So he was very worried about his children. So he says in chapter 124, uh, it says, It says, If God was not with us, let Israel decree it now. Had not Hashem been with us when men rose up against us. Men, it means Ishmael. It means the Muslims. 
This chapter is especially about Pere Adam, the fifth, it's the fifth exile. God forbid, Shalot Ikre Chas Vali Chas V'Shalom. And it says, then they would have swollen us alive. And you know, you can see that, that they want to swallow us alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the waters would have uh, drowned us. The current would have surged across our soul. Then they would have surged. Uh, it says, oh, blessed is Hashem who did not pr uh, present us as prey for their teeth, which Hashem did not give us as a food for their teeth. Baruch Hashem. Our souls escaped like a bird from a cage, it says. So God is going to save us, but in order to be saved, we need to do tshuva. We need to remind ourselves that we need to work on our midot. We need to remind ourselves that even though we see each other over here as individuals, we are truly not individuals. We are all responsible for each other. We are all sparkles of one soul. Think about it. We are all, it means that when we do a mitzvah, we give merit to the whole, to all of our children, to all of our nation, the children of Israel, and then to the whole world. And God forbid, if we sin, we do the same thing. All of us are responsible for each other's sins. That's why we have the mitzvah of velot That's why we need to tell someone when he does something wrong. Nicely, but we need to say something. Because we're responsible for each other. And then it says in the book of Zechariah, just a minute. It says in the book of Zechariah, it says that God says, Behold, a day is coming for Hashem. It's in chapter 14. When your souls will be divided, I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem for the war, it says. At the end of days. All of the nations will come to war against the children of Israel in Jerusalem, it says. It says, on that day, <coughs> on that day, the light will not be either very bright or very dim. It will be a unique day. It will be known as a Shem's day. Neither day nor night. But it will happen towards evening time that there will be light. And then it says, and then it says, this will be the plague. There's going to be a plague between the nations. And the plague, and the plague will be like this. Hashem will strike all the peoples that have organized against Jerusalem. Each one's flesh will melt away while it is standing on his feet, it says. The flesh is going to melt. Then each one's eyes will melt away in their scots, in, in the holes, it says. And each one's tongue will melt away in their mouth. It shall be on that day that there will be a great panic of Hashem among them. Each one will grab the hands of his fellow. There will be confusion. They won't know what to do. Because God is going to fight. It's the, it's the stone, you remember? Of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. It's the stone. The stone means that God is going to make a miracle for the children of Israel. And with that miracle, he's going to save the children of Israel. And he says... And it says that God is going to, uh, to put his feet. You know, God doesn't have feet. But it's like his feet, it's written in, in Zechariah. He's on the mountain of olives, it says. And the mountain of olives, Har HaZaitim Birushalayim, will split open in the middle. You know, the, the mountain, Har HaZaitim, is between Jerusalem and Emek Yoshafat, the valley of Yoshafat. It says that the mountain is going to be split. Everybody, ayin be'ayin, yiru b'shuv Hashem tziyon. They are going to see Hashem. Truly see Hashem like we saw Him, like the shefachot saw Him, the maid servants saw Him when they went out of Egypt and they were crossing the, uh, the split sea. So it will be the same. And God is going to put a river of flowing water, light water, through Harazetim, through the mountain of olives. You know, you understand the meaning of it? And he says, it says in Zechariah, that the, na that the people that will stay from the nations, after all of the plague and everything, they are going to worship Hashem, and God is going to give them a mitzvah. You know what the mitzvah is going to be? The mitzvah is going to be the mitzvah of Sukkot. Mm -hmm. And you will not, yes, it's written, this, I will read it to you. It shall, it shall be that all who are left over from all the nations who had invaded Jerusalem will come up every year to worship the King Hashem, Master of Legions, and to celebrate the festival of Sukkot. 
This is the mitzvah that is, it says in the Midrash that they are going to ask for a mitzvah. And, and God is going to give them the mitzvah of Sukkot. Why the mitzvah of Sukkot? Because when we, we, we do the mitzvah of Sukkot, with all of our body we do the mitzvah. Once we come into the Sukkah, all of our body is surrounded with a mitzvah. You know, but we have even a higher mitzvah. You know what the mitzvah is? The mitzvah of Shabbat. Once we light the candles, it doesn't matter where we are, we're already in the mitzvah. Look how beautiful it is. All our organs, everything is in the mitzvah already. It doesn't matter where we are. We don't have to go to a sukkah and to go inside the sukkah in order to be part of the mitzvah. But once Shabbat comes in, we are already in the mitzvah. And it doesn't matter where we are. So it says that at the end of days, Bezrat Hashem, God is going to save us. And God is, and God is going to do that by miracles, by taking the stone and by miraculously taking that and throwing the stone on all of those nations, on the feet, and all of this image is going to be blown away. With the wind, nothing will stay from it. Only the children of Israel will be like a high mountain that will stay forever. So it said, Amen, Ken Yiratzon. Shegem Mashiach, Tzitkanim, Bim Rabbi, Amen, Amen. I would like to tell you, dear women, it's a, I told you that it's a chana, it's a preparation for the month of Elul. So I told you, God forbid, what could happen to us. It says in Masechet Sanhedrin, it says like this, just a minute. It says, Amar <clears throat> Rabbi Eliezer, it says, Rabbi Eliezer said, which means if the children of Israel repent, then they will be redeemed. But if they won't, they won't be redeemed. So says Rabbi Yoshua, so if they won't, why, they will stay like this, so they won't be redeemed forever? So he says no. He says, then God, the Holy One, blessed is He, will appoint a king over them, whose decrees will be as harsh as those of Haman, God forbid. And the Jewish people will repent. And in this way, God will bring them back to the right path. Dear women, do we need God to punish us in order to do tshuva, God forbid? Do we need, God forbid, to go to, go to this exile, God forbid? We do not need the wild man ab above us. Instead, we should do tshuva now. And God says... Sefer Yeshaya, it's written that there can be two times, two times for Mashiach to come. The one, the first time is Beita, on the, on the time that already from the Reshit, in the beginning God already chose the, the time, the date. But then we can do Vachishena, we can do that sooner. And it depends only on us. We can, be, we can be redeemed with mercy, with love. And we can, God forbid, to be redeemed by harsh judgment. God forbid. So we should choose the love way, the love path, which means we should work on Amidot, on our characteristics. And don't tell me, well, you see, the whole world is very bad today. So you, you can see the lie everywhere. You can tell me, that you can see the lie everywhere. It, it's everywhere, all around us. So what can I do? I'm only one human being. So listen, dear ladies. Avraham Avinu was also one. Avraham Avinu was the son of Terach. He was also one. And he recognized Hashem in this world. He had this galut. He was looking, he was analyzing what, what is in this world. And he had to say, was the only person. And he stood up for Hashem. So think about it. We already know Hashem. We just need to wake up ourselves. You know, wake up calls is the bell to ring, like we do on Slichot when we go from house. The men go from house to house and remind them to come to Slichot in the morning. It's the same thing. We need to take this bell and remind ourselves and say, no, we have the power to change. And we are dear women, we have a lot of power. Because if the house is kosher, if our home is kosher, it's because of us. Not because of the husband, because we are dealing with the food in the house. We are buying the food. If our sons go to yeshiva because we push them to go to the yeshiva. If our men go to a, a lesson of a shul Torah, a lesson of Torah, it's because we need to push them to a shul Torah. All of the ho our house, is, all the foundation of the house is on the head of, and the, the shoulders of the woman. Because she is a karabite, she is the essence of the home. So it means that we need to do the work. 
And if we have, and we light a candle, if we are a candle to Hashem, because if we do what Hashem wants us, so we light a candle, okay? Ner mitzvah v'torah or. So if we do that, then our children also do that. And then their children will do that. And then not only our children, our cousins, our friends, they will see that. Eventually they will imitate what we are doing. They will see that we are trying to be good. We're trying to look at our characteristics. We're trying to be better. So Hashem will give us Mashiach quickly. Sooner, Achishena, sooner before the time that he already decided that it will be. And there is always gates that are opened. We just need to go into the gate. So I would like Bezrat Hashem to tell you that I would like to bless you that Mashiach will come b'mera b'yameinu amen. And she'agia mevaser el yao navi zakhur latov. Ve'lolam yipared adam yichavero b'dvar alakha yachid barabim alakha kerabim. God bless you. Amen. Shalkoach.